Hello and welcome to my awesome system build. Today I'll be putting this together. Now this is just the case. This is an Obsidian uh, Obsidian Series 900D from Corsair. Uh, and what we'll be doing is we'll be putting everything into it. Now this is actually going to be a multi-day process, but we're going to take care of the major lifting today in this video. What we'll be doing is we'll be installing our power supply which is a Raidmax RX-1000AE. Very nice power supply. We'll also be installing our motherboard, which is a Crosshair 5 Formula Z motherboard. We'll also be installing our graphics cards. We have two Radeon R9 290X video cards, which we will be setting up. Uh, we'll also be installing our RAM and our main hard drive. Uh, that should be enough for this video. I hope that you find this video informative and helpful. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. First thing we're going to do, and some people may argue that I should do it differently, but the first thing we're going to do is the power supply. Because we want to go ahead and get that seated and kind of in there and out of the way so that we can work uh, more easily. like about this case is, if I actually wanted to, I could very easily install a second power supply alongside this one. However, I don't believe this build is going to require more than one. So that's actually it. Four screws and our, po our power supply is safely in place. Now we just have to go ahead and put the cables off to the side and out of the way. After we've done that, we can go ahead and move on to the next step, which will be installing our motherboard. For safety and ease, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the case on its side, or rather, yes, on its back side, so that we have a full uh, room to work inside the case. The case is almost wider than the table. That's scary. This is our next component that we will be installing. This is the Crosshair V Formula Z motherboard. This was chosen because it's uh, it's very nice. It's fairly future-proof-ish with technology. There's no such thing as actually being feature or future-proof. But this one does provide us uh, a lot of room to grow should we need to or want to. This is a heck of a time to realize that the motherboard that you just bought doesn't come with screws. Let's see if we can find some. It wasn't easy, but I actually ended up being able to Frankenstein nine case screws out of an old build, which is over there off camera. Um, so we will be able to do this. Um, so yeah, and now we're gonna go ahead and make this happen. First things first, what we want to do is put our back plate in place. The reason we want to do this first is because it only goes on from one side, and that's the inside. So you want to go ahead and snap that where it goes, which is going to be towards the top of the case and in the back.
and it will snap firmly in place, which is a nice feature because I have had uh, back plates in the past not do that. They just kind of sit there and then you have to force the board into keeping them in place. It's just a big old mess. But this was very nice that it snapped. If you have an ESD strap to keep from uh, shocking the board, uh, ESD is electrostatic discharge and it can kill your components if you're not careful. An ESD strap will help you be a little bit less careful um, because it will keep your body from generating or storing um, electrostatic energy. So if you have that, this is the best time to use it. Um, so yeah, I do not have one, however I am making a point of keeping myself grounded by touching metal around me and you know, dissipating that potential energy. First screw is usually the most difficult, so what we will be doing is finding a screw that we can easily land so that we can use that as a guide for the others. As soon as you get one in, then you can kind of just nudge the board here and there to make sure you can get the others in. and the board is safely in place. We're gonna go ahead and take a break because I have pizza and I'm gonna turn on the air conditioning. It's hot in here. Okay, the next thing that I've decided that we're going to do, we're gonna go ahead and install our RAM uh, just because I have it here off to the side and readily available. So the very first thing that we're going to do is open up the... No, oh, it doesn't move on both sides, just the one. Interesting. So we're going to go ahead and open that up and put the RAM into its new home. We've now successfully installed all 32 gigabytes of RAM into this machine. Now that it's come time to uh, install the graphics cards, we actually have to modify the case just slightly. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take out the uh, plating here. If you can see the plating, my hand running behind it. We have to take that out so that we can put our very fancy new graphics cards in there. So that's what we'll be doing now. We've decided on the placement of our cards based off of the bandwidth available to us uh, on the board. Now, our PCI 16X slots are actually going to be here and here. These two are going to be our very fastest. So that's where we will be placing our graphics cards. Um, We've got two rather beefy cards, so if we're not utilizing them to their full potential, there's really no point in having them. Unless you have to make a trade-off based on other factors that we don't have here. As you can see, we did run into a little bit of difficulty, and that's because this screw was actually cross-threaded in the case. That doesn't normally happen, but it is something you need to be prepared for, usually to very gently nudge things out of place. 
and kind of, you know, move things around when needed just to give things that gentle little push. But of course, in a very careful way so that you don't break your very expensive equipment. <clears throat> We're going to be starting with the first card. Now this was actually something, it was a an open box uh, on Newegg.com. And I bought it as an open box because it was at a very significant discount. And with a card such as this, that significant discount was definitely enough to make it worth my while. Very lucky, lucky break on my part. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and line everything up here. And we are going to find out that I may have actually done this improperly. Yes. As a matter of fact, I believe I did. Through not paying attention, I realized that I should have re removed these two back plates. So you can see my hand here. You can see I removed these two. I should have removed one more to the right. Or my right, your left, I think. So let's go ahead and try to place that card one more time. Fits snug as a bug. Let's go ahead and get that second card in. Now it used to be that you had to connect these two cards in order to get them to configure themselves into a, a crossfire array. Um, I believe array is the right word. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the, or in the comment section. However, now um, AMD has made the decision to allow these to communicate through the bus, saving that wire, and uh, there seems to be plenty of bandwidth to allow it, so why not? Why uh, even require the extra cord? Uh, of course, these are for power, so yeah, that's, uh, that's actually kind of cool. The last thing that we have to install uh, is actually going to be our, uh, our hard drive. Ooh, more nice little stickers. Um, our hard drive is going to be a one terabyte SSD, solid state drive, solid state disk, however you want to put that. I expected a one terabyte hard drive to actually be larger than this uh, for an SSD. It's very compact, very small. That shocked me. But yeah, so we've got to install this. The question is where? We don't seem to have a place to put this. We don't have a cage for it. So that is going to be the next question. We will have to figure this out. So, we're going to go ahead and skip over the SSD um, at this time because it looks like... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Corsair, buddy old pal, friend. What is this? A mystery box! What is in this mystery box? It was hiding in the case. Could this possibly be the missing screw? Oh, the missing screws? The screws that I had no idea where to find? The ones that didn't come with the motherboard? They were in here all along. Let's see if we have anything to mount a... Anything to mount a SSD with there? A nice little handy tool that would have helped us to get 
those out. This is what I get for not doing my research. Goodness gravy. Very nice. Corsair, your stock just went up a notch. However, I don't think I, st I still don't think I have anything that I can put an SSD on. Or in. Except, oh, oh, except I do! Apparently, these cages, I can set up so that, oh, 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 is this, is this what I think it is? I can set these cages up to allow me to put the SSD in the cage. That is epically awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to attach the SSD to a cage, and then we'll continue. So here we are, this is the SSD mounted to the, uh, the cage. Now, um, to be honest with you, I am not sure whether I have the drive facing the right way or not. Um, I will, should put an annotation on screen right now um, after I've had time to test the build and kind of figure things out. I would assume that it's right or almost right. Yeah. I don't know, we'll test. But either way, regardless of whether it faces one way or the other, it snaps in place just like that. Um, of course, this will not be its final home. I believe I may actually place it up top over here um, for just reasons. No reasons in particular, just reasons. Um, one thing to keep in mind with these cages, if you do get a Corsair um, Obsidian Series 900D, is that these are rather temperamental. As you can see, I've got a pin loose here, which I have to fix before I can put it back in. This is definitely not something that you will want to constantly fiddle with, because, like I said, it's just kind of temperamental how it fits together, and there's not much keeping it from coming out of alignment. Do not get me wrong though, it's a very nice feature to have in these cages. However, something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and connect our stock power cables. Uh, what we will do first is we will connect our big Mama Jamma first. Um, that's going to be our uh, large, here we go. And let's see, there we go. Okay, so it actually connects this way and we can tell because uh, without having to try to fit it, because here at top you can see that uh, it's got a clip that uh, goes to that clip there on the motherboard. So what we do is we go ahead, insert tab A into slot B and it should go in very nicely, very gently. Might take a little bit of a push, but once we have it in there, we can make sure that it is secure. Try to tug on it just a little bit. Do not yank on it, because this is a very expensive piece of equipment. But yeah, I'll just give it a tiny little tug and make sure that it's in there right. After you do that, then you can go ahead and bend your cord and maneuver it to your liking. You may also decide that you want to do something along the lines of, let's go ahead and take this back off. Taking this off, if you ever decide to, is kind of a, an ordeal. You have to press here at the back and then lift because of that snap. You could put this down through here and up here to reduce cable clutter. However, at this point, I believe that may cause more work than it's actually worth. So we're going to go ahead, we are going to put this back like we had it until we have a more accurate idea of what kind of space we'll have and whether that will be necessary. Another nice little tuck, okay. So that's connected. We can now move on to our PCI Express um, six and eight. Here we go. Um, connectors and let's see here I 
This is going to be our eight. And here again, you will want to pay attention to where your snaps are right here, uh, because those are going to tell you uh, right away which way to face your power adapters. And again, as far as cable management goes, we're not so much worried about that at this moment, but you may want to put a little bit of thought into that as well. One of the reasons you'll want to take cable management into account is we've made a huge mistake here putting one of the cables outside the chassis. So we'll go ahead and take this off. Pretty much it didn't cause us a huge inconvenience. However, if we would have gotten further into the build, that small inconvenience could have been a major frustration. It does no damage, but it kind of does demotivate you if you catch it late in the game. One of the many reasons that I chose a modular power supply is because with a setup like this, it requires a lot of juice. And you also don't want to have too many cables running around. Now we are going to do some cable management stuff here because this honestly looks like heck. But what we've got here is we've got our um, cable management solution, which is the modular power supply. It came with multiple of these. I can uh, configure this um, in a lot of different ways and it's very helpful. So that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. And as far as the components we have here, they are all now powered other than the hard disk, which we will get into um, when we do the rest of our disks here in a later video. That's actually everything that we set out to install in this video. I think that everything went fairly smoothly. Um, we still do need some time. We need to install some more things. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If it has, let us know in the comment section down below. If you have any ideas about what we can do with this machine, again, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I, yeah, anyways, till next time, I'm Anthony, Senior Manager with Freedom. Like, subscribe, Kinds, please.